Let's see. Y'all ready? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. Let's see. Good stuff. Um, you're going to need this. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world... Uh, out unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them even unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that uh, the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and he laid aside his garments. And he took up a towel and girded himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh Simon Peter. And Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And he was speaking of the cross. Now, meaning, I'm going to show you why. This whole, and I'm going to stop right there on verse 7 and let you fill you up. Jesus is about, is washing the, 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 the disciples' feet, okay? They're all sitting down at the Passover. Judas has already, Satan has already put it in the heart to, you know, that Judas is going to betray him. And now, Jesus gets up. He's the Word of God, the Word made flesh. He's the water. He's the one that actually washes us. So Jesus gets up, picks up a, a bowl, pours water into it, girts himself, and then he begins to wash the disciples' feet. Even Judas. He washes even Judas's feet, his betrayer. And Peter tells him, Lord, you know, you are going to wash my feet? You know? And listen what he says. He says, um... In verse um, 7, Jesus answered and said unto him, um, What I do, thou knowest not now. He didn't realize what he was doing. But you shall know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Never. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou shalt have no part with me. This, is, this has nothing to do absolutely nothing to do with a physical foot washing. Jesus is the cleansing agent. He is the substance. And your feet represent the gospel. Your feet represent where you go and what you do. That's why I said if your feet are clean, your whole body is clean. And the commandment that Jesus gives his disciples, and you are to do likewise, wash each other's feet. What was he talking about? Let's take our shoes off and have a foot washing? No. No. Though we do that, we've done it. Is there anything wrong with it? No, it's very humbling. You know, I had my foot washed even in here. But that isn't what he was talking about. Because me washing your feet or you washing my feet doesn't have anything to do with our internal inheritance. And that's why Jesus said, Peter, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, you'll have no part in my kingdom. That's in another gospel. So it had nothing to do with the physical foot washing. Watch. He says... Verse 9, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but to his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean. He tells him you're clean, but not all. Wow. 
So Jesus even washes Judas' feet. And the walk that Peter is walking, God knows, Jesus knows, that whatever Peter does, he gets into it where he, you know, he denies him all this stuff, and we'll get into that. But he knows that Peter, he says, for I pray for you, and when you have, you know, repented and recovered, go and strengthen the brethren. So he says, you are clean, but not all of you. He's not talking about a foot washing, a regular little footsie thing that now. It's talking about the, it's talking about his walk and what he does. And Judas' walk and what he had lifted up his heel to do against Jesus Christ, he was unclean. That's why he said, my own friend. His own friend, who, 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 who he sat down, he ate and he supped with. In Psalms it says 49, or 48 it says, has turned up his heels against me. Your heel represents your, your support. So Jesus' own support has turned up his heel against him. Now I want you to see something. If we read John chapter 13, we'll find out that the feet, it not only represents your walk, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. The feet represent the, the, the gospel, the word of God. If you see on, the, uh, on this picture right here against the wall, this is a picture that uh, uh, Rebecca took of my feet when we was doing the, um, that seminar out there at the, the stadium. And man, when she gave me that picture, I was like, wow. And the Lord told me to write on my feet one foot repentance on the other one baptism because repentance and baptism is the gospel. It's about what Jesus had done. The feet represent the gospel. The feet represent you walk and what you do every day. And the importance of that is that when the disciples would go out each and every day, yeah, they're wearing sandals, their feet's going to get dirty from the things of the world. But you need to wash in the Word. The Word of God is the cleansing agent. It would, it, it, it's that which cleanses us every day. I had a friend of mine that was going to do something. He was going to do something that, you know, he wasn't really thinking or whatever it was. After I got to speak to him, he's like, you know what, I'm not doing that now. That's what God has called you and me to do. To wash each other's feet in love. And them not even knowing that, you know, you're actually washing him. And if I was doing something that maybe wasn't so right, another brother would come up to me and, hey, man, what's going on? I hope he would come to me in love and talk to me and whatever it is so that we could find out, you know, and, 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 and what was happening. He didn't even know. But after it was done, he's like, wow. Simple question. I asked him, would Jesus do that? Would Jesus do it? No. You know what? I ain't doing that. Change this whole deal now. So that's what God has called us to do, to wash each other's feet. How do we wash each other's feet? By the Word of God. It has nothing to do with you physically washing my feet or washing yours. In fact, it's so crazy how everything works out. A friend of mine came over by the house and took off his shoe and said, Look at this. He was showing me something on his foot. And God is speaking to me about feet. Wow. Not only is he speaking to me about feet, but he's talking to me about, you know, um, the heel and the support. And here it is that Judas is the betrayer, my own friend who I did eat and sup with. Who I did eat and sup with and, and slept with. Who know, you know, I, who, who heard me speak openly and in private has turned up his heels against me. That's why the Bible says that your betrayer will be those of your own house. Those of your own house. Wow. The ones in your own house hurt. Amen. That's the ones that hurt. You know, I just had uh, somebody else tell me today, you know, that something happened in their life, in their own, you know, own family member. His own offspring turned against him. That hurts. That, I heard that this morning. This morning. When those of your own household turn against you, and the Bible says, look, in the end times, that's what's going to happen. That's right. Those of your own house are going to turn against you and turn you in, the ones you did eat and sup with. My mama just came back from, you know, uh, being gone for a week, spent time with her brother. Soon as he got there, soon as she got there, man, he attacked her. Biblically, about the word. Oh, you are so crazy, Patsy. I can't believe you believe that stuff. 
you know, you know that it, you know if you do these things, you're going to go to hell. Oh, stop it, Patsy. There ain't no hell. Are you crazy? And my mom's like, you know what? Let's stop. And she spent a week with him. But it's those of your own house that will actually betray you. Yeah. Those, you know, even now today, with some of the things that just came down the pipe, with this, you know, uh, the, the gay deal and all of that, you know, there's people on Facebook. I've watched, you know, my wife and, and Facebook and family, they like, and attacking her. Oh, you way, I mean, the one just told her, you're, you know, we, you know, you, you way too conservative and, and that ain't how it is and the Bible's been changed, it ain't the same and, man, when things start to go down and break down, these people don't know Jesus and if they got something to gain, believe what I'm telling you, they'll turn you in for money, they'll turn you in for food, they'll turn you in, especially if they know they put an APB out there, wanted all Christians, where, you know, there's no food, we're going to give food, we're going to give you uh, $50,000 in a new house if you turn them in. Brother, you're in trouble. They might be able to hold out for a little while, but it's those of, of your own house. That's why the enemy is always within. We got into a big discussion about that. Let's keep going. Um, the feet represent our walk. And that's the importance of us each and every day being in God's Word. Because once you're in this world, you go down the road, you see the billboards, you see the things on TV, you, you, you're around the world and all the stuff that's going on and you, the jokes and, and just everything that's inundated out there. Man, when you get home, you need some table time. Or you'll find yourself slipping. If you don't get that, if you don't get that dirt off your feet... And God has called you and me to wash each other's feet. And if you're not spending table time, you can't wash nobody's feet. You realize that. Because you don't have the cleansing agent. You don't have what it is that that person needs at that time. That's the importance of spending time with him because Jesus will tell you exactly what you need and he knows the encounter that you're going to face that day so that you can meet that need. Man, don't deceive yourself. Don't be a martyr. Busy, busy, busy about the Lord's work because the door will be closed in your face. For I know you not. No liar, cheater, manipulator, fornicator, adulterer, homosexual, and all the other ones that are out there will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Period. You understand that? If you live a life of adultery, if you live a life of fornication, if you live a life as a liar or a drunkard, you will not go to heaven. Not my word. I'm just repeating what he said. Amen. What who said? Jesus Christ. We've been called to holiness, to wash, sanctify, purify. The Bible says the righteous purify themselves. The righteous purify themselves. How do we purify ourselves? In His Word. In His Word. The only way you can commune with Jesus Christ is by sitting down with the Word. The Word is Jesus. If you're not sitting down with Him, you're having no communion with Him. Oh, my Bible's sitting there, it's on, you know, it's on a table. Did you sit down with him and commune with him and have fellowship with him? Because there's some things in your life, I guarantee it, he wants to wash. That word will wash you white as snow. That word will cleanse your walk. You can't be like a Martha and asking, hey Mary, what was Jesus talking about? You got to get in the washing machine. You got to be flipped around and spun and, and jerked around to get the stains off. Sometimes it's rough and it's hard. And those of your own house, don't ever forget it. Those of your own house will be the ones that will turn you in. What am I saying? I'm saying the ones that are even sitting in this house will be the ones that will betray you. If they don't have a true walk and personal relationship with yeah. Jesus Christ. Because they'll love their life more. They'll love their life more instead of losing their life. Let's look at it. The feet represent our walk. And we need table time. 
Because it's through the table time that God washes us. And in washing us, it helps us to wash others. The heel. Man, I, I got into a big thing with this. The heel is the support. Now, what's amazing about that, I did a big thing about how a woman, uh, God has given us a support system in our life. The woman is, he says, I'll give you a help meet. I broke down help meet, went all thing and showed you how it's the heel or the support of a man. These two become one. She shall be your help me. That's why Lucifer, Satan, struck out at Eve. Why? Because Eve was Adam's support system. He struck out at, her, at Adam's heel, his Achilles heel, Eve, his wife, to take him down. The enemy will always strike out at your support system, whether it's people that are sitting in the church, whether it's people at your house. They'll come together to do what? Strike out. The Bible says in the beginning in Genesis that, you know, the woman's seed would crush his head, but the serpent would strike at the heel. Meaning, the enemy go, always goes after the, the support system. God wants to kill this church. What's he going to do? He's going to attack my wife. Amen. God want, I mean, the enemy wants to kill this church. The enemy is going to attack my wife. Exactly. And has done it big time. She's never failed me. Never forsake me. Ever. Never. But I've had a lot of people in this building forsake me. Amen. And strike out at me. That's right. And what I'm telling you, you need to know now because the support system, the enemy will do everything it can to rip out your support system, right. to take you down. He'll do everything. That's why the enemy is so big on, on divorce and marriages. He knows if he can break the family down, you have, they don't have, you know, they lost. The sons and daughters don't have a father don't have a mother like they're supposed to be. They don't see the love, the unity that God has put together the way it's supposed to be. Broke the support system down. The average marriage now lasts less than five years. Less than five years. And the divorce rate is higher in the church. Amen. Because there's no relationship. It ain't death to, you know, uh, do his part now. You know, it's, uh, well, she's not doing this for me, or he's not doing that, or he's not what I expected, or she's not what I expected, and forgot all about what a covenant is, because the court says, you know, a covenant is not important anymore. Amen. And it's all about covenant. It's to break down, to support, to heal. My own friend who I did eat and sup with has turned up his heel against me. You know, when, God, when the enemy has placed something in your heart, and you're standing here, and Jesus said, okay, what you're going to do, Judas, do it quickly. The first thing that happens is when you go to make a step is your heel comes all off the ground. Your heart connected to the heel. That's where it's connected. That heel now is on, uh, on a path to either to bring life or to bring death. And that's why the feet are so important. If your feet are clean, if you're washed in the Word of God, then I won't never have to worry about your heel being turned up against your Lord. Because when you come against the brother, you're not coming against the brother, you're coming against the Lord. You've turned up your heels against the Lord. How beautiful it is, you know, with the, you know, the unity of the brethren. Amen. The heel is a support. So the Lord had given me the foot, the feet, or the foot, the heel, and the bruiser. Because this all goes together. We see the feet, you know, we see the heel uh, back going back to Genesis. With the feet, you know, he's going to crush the enemy's head. Uh, the heel, which is the support of the foot. You don't have a heel, you're in trouble. You know what I'm talking about? And the other thing, the, the, uh, the, the foot, the heel, and the bruiser. Why is he called the bruiser? He shall bruise your heel. Why? How can someone... What is a bruise? A bruise is, is an inner hurt. You see, someone you don't know can't hurt you. But someone you love can bruise your heel. Heel. Because a bruise is, a, is, 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 is an inner hurt that's blood you could see on the outside. Meaning somebody struck 
and caused the hurt, caused the bruise. That person was someone you loved. Whether it was your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad. Or that is an inner hurt. It's called a bruise. A smoking flax, he will not quench. He will blow on it again and fire will light up. In a bruised heel, he won't discard. Bruise means to disable, to batter, to dent, to break down by pounding, to crush, to wound, an injury, to injure, to shatter, or an abrasion. Man, you ever seen somebody that got a bruised heel? Man, they, they can't do, I mean, this is, you know, they can't do nothing. They're limping along. Here it is. You know, um, the feet represent the walk and we need the table time. The heel represent our support. You know, I hear John all the time tell me, as soon as his support leaves, he's by my house crying. <laughs> it's the truth. It really is. It's big tears too. I got to pat him on his pampers and everything. And, it, and good thing Cherie, you know, uh, well, I don't want to say got hurt, but John was glad and he wasn't glad, but his support came back, you know. The bruiser. We know that Satan is the bruiser. And how does he cause, cause bruises? He uses family members. He uses a close friend. He uses your mate. Um, all of this that I'm talking to you right now is about a preparation for what's coming. One thing I did in law enforcement is that, you know, when I was in law enforcement and I needed to get information from somebody, I separated them. And in separating them, you know, um, and I say I, but, you know, I would talk to them and say, hey, you know, your buddy over there, he, he's squawking like a baby, you know. He's saying you did it. Next thing you know, he's like, you know, his friend turned him in, turned him over. Then he starts squawking and starts ratting. And next thing you know, they turned against one another. But you see, in the end, you got to realize that when they come, and they all coming, and however it works out, if I know that I know that I know that my friend would never turn me in, I know that I know that I know my wife would never betray me, no matter what they told her. That is because of the time that was spent together, because she knows me, she knows I would never betray her. And I know she would never betray me. Never. Ever. That's how it needs to be. You need to know Jesus that way so that you don't betray Him. And listen to me. If you just know about Him and you haven't experienced Him and you haven't had table time and you haven't sat at His feet and cried when He spoke to you because I'm telling you, when He speaks to you, you break. You break. Break down. And it is like, you know, and that's what you need to understand and know that, you know, there are going to be many that turn against him in the end. Because the Bible says it. Just like Judas, those of your own house, the Bible says, mother will betray daughter and father son and son father. Those, those of your own house will be your enemy. You don't think he knows? You don't think they were turning him in when they was having secret church underground and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, they was. When Paul was converted, they thought he was just make-believe and that he was going to come and, 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 and turn him in. That's why they couldn't receive from him at first. Man, just a minute more. Um, I talked to you about my mom. Um... This is, uh, I talked to you uh, about something uh, that happened to somebody else in here. I want to tell you something that through this whole message, the Lord was speaking to me. Um, my brother-in-law came over to my house Monday. Mike, he came and ministered here. Um, 
he had called me up on a phone and left me a message around the 1st of July. He had a dream. And the dream was this. He said, um, now what's crazy about it, he called me up and left me a message around July 1st, around the beginning of the month. But, and I seen the message. And I told my wife, Saturday, last Saturday, I said, man, I was going through my messages and I seen Mike left me a message. I got to call him. Because I haven't seen my brother-in-law or my ex-brother-in-law um, in a while. He's a man of God. Man of God. Powerful man of God. Um, but anyway, uh, his wife left him. My sister. And he fought for her for seven years. But anyway, um, he came over and he was a breath of fresh air. Powerful man of God. He said, um, and this was Saturday, he said, brother, I had a dream about you. And um, so I said, well, you know, he said, this is what it was. He said, because I'm really concerned about you. Now, this happened around the 1st of July, right around the 1st. It could have been a little bit before or just a, a little bit after, but he was concerned. He said, I didn't hear from you, so I needed to come over here and tell you what the dream was. So I said, what was the dream? He said, here's the dream. He said, we was, we was outside, and there was a big horse in front of you. A big brown horse. Big horse. He said, man, this horse was, was big. He said, and I was behind you. And he said, you had a smile on your face. And you started walking up to the horse like that, and you put your hand out like to, to, to touch the horse, like this. He said, I was behind you, but I could see the smile on your face. And now this was just told to me, Saturday, I mean Monday. When he gives me, the Lord gives me this message, then he comes over and tells me what he tells me about, you know, when I put my hand out like that, he said, you had a smile on your face and you put your hand out like this. He said the horse reared up like that. He said a big old horse reared up. And he said what was so crazy about it. He said when that horse raised up at you like that. Now I'm already processing it. He said, you know, normally a horse will like kick like that. But he said it was, it was crazy because when a horse reared up like that, his leg turned sideways and he smacked you across the face like a man. He said, and he said, and you went down on one knee and you had your hand in your face like this. And he said, he was, he said, I was freaking out. He said, because the way the horse slapped you, a horse don't do that. And he said, he slapped you like a man. And you went down and he said, I walked up behind you and I put my hand on your shoulder. And, you know, he said, you know, he said, Joseph, or Robbie, he calls me Robbie, he said, Robbie, Robbie. He said, are you all right? And he said, and when you looked up at me, your face was all bloody. He said, but you was crying. He said, but you wasn't crying from the hit. Um, he said, because your nose was broke, it was to the side, it was way over here. And there was blood all over your face, and you was crying because of what happened. But it, you wasn't crying from, from the pain. He said it was like hurt. And he said, um, and he said, and, and I woke up. He said, uh, he said, brother, can I tell you what the Lord told me? I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah. He said, this is what I believe it is. You're going to be faced, you're going to be, he said, the horse represents a man that's in power. And he's going to rear up at you. And he's going to slap you across your face. And all you're doing is extending your hand and what it is that you want to give. This is his interpretation. He said, and you went down to your feet and you was holding your face and you was crying because you was hurt on the inside. Because this man is a man of power 
that you're going to face here shortly that's going to raise up and slap you across your face. He's not going to stab you in the back. He's going to slap you across your face because it's someone that you're going to meet face to face that's going to do this straight to your face. Is that not crazy? When he told me that, my wife was, uh, was there, my mother-in-law was there, and I'm like, brother, you have no idea what you just said. You have no idea. I was, just I was just confronted, called to sit down and eat with someone, confronted face to face, and then taken and slapped. And it hurt. It brought me to my knees and I was hurt on the inside. And this whole thing that's going on and what the Lord was teaching me of is those of your own house will betray you. Those of your own house. But we need to be able to um, and I'm going to tell you something. If I would have got the message three weeks prior the first of July you know, in this time that I was, before Mike came, I was questioning, you know, Lord, you know, did I do right? You know, did I do something wrong? You know, did, you know, is it, uh, should I have done something different? And because the Mike, my brother-in-law, came with that dream, he let me know perfectly well you was walking up, your hand was extending to him with a smile on your face and you were smacked across your face. And these are the hurts that the Lord tells us that will come from those of your own house. But you need to be forgiven. Even Jesus, listen, this whole deal is about washing the feet. Even Jesus, knowing what Judas was going to do and betray him, still washed his feet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Washed his betrayer's feet. This whole message is coming from, you know, I believe that we're coming to a time, we're coming to a time that, you know, we need to be able to you know, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and you need, you know, uh, you need to know Him because those of your own house will betray you. That's right. And, you know, I want to say something. So, uh, I want to say something about everybody knows what it is and what happened. I, well, everybody doesn't know what it is and what happened. But it doesn't matter. It's because it, it's it's all good, and um, there ain't there's no more hurt. There's no more, you know. Uh, it's uh, it's a, it's forgiveness because you have to forgive those. And sometimes people do things they think is right, but re is really not right, you know. And um, and I'm gonna tell you something. It, it, I mean. It, God is good. God is good. And um, it doesn't have anything to do with any, any other people. It's something that the Lord is saying and wanting to say so that you guys can be prepared for what's coming. You understand? I guarantee it. A lot of people have been, you know, went through a lot of stuff, not only in regular families, but in churches as well. And you know what? You don't say it. I didn't come back and I didn't tell, you know, the church things that happened and because all that does, I just told my wife we went out to eat yesterday. Went on a date night. And we was coming back and I don't keep anything from her. I said, but I do keep one thing from you. And she's like, what you keep from me? I said, and this is my bride. 
I know if someone says something about me, I'm not going to tell my wife because she's going to harbor bitterness. It, she was like, what? what? I'm a lay hand. Yeah. So you don't want to hurt, you know, you, if you don't have to say, you don't really have to say it. Because then you know that person's going to have to deal with it. And it's, it's, you know, it's all good. But I want to show you something which really give you some revelation on this right here. Check this out. Let me just read a little bit more. We, we're almost done. Get to Judas. Um, it says, uh, verse 17, If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Wait, let me go back up. He says, verse 11, For you know, um, for he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and he had taken his garments, and was sat down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for I am so. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, Ye also ought to wash one another's feet. This is the word. This is not physical washing. Watch. He says, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than him that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. That's a support. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, um, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, one of you shall betray me, because one of them is not clean, right? He says, Then the disciples looked one to another, and, and he said, uh, Doubting of, of whom he spoke, Now there was one leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the disciples whom Jesus loved, Simon Peter, therefore, beckoning to John, uh, he, says, uh, he said, Ask who it should be. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, uh, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Watch this. This is good stuff. Lord, who is it? Um, he says, uh, um, he said, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I've dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, and Satan entered him. Watch this right here. This is amazing. The word sop in the Greek is 55... 96 in the, the Greek, in the Strong's. It's soma, soma, somenion, you know, for somenion, whatever that word is. It means, sop just means a piece of bread. Now, let me set the context for you. They're sitting, sitting down at a prepared meal, like, uh, you know, they're about to, he's about to have the Seder meal, the Passover meal. He's sitting down with them, having the Passover meal, explaining it to him, though the Passover is not yet, because he's going to be that that dies that day. But he's having this meal with him. So, if you know anything about the Seder meal, there's four cups. The cup of, the cup of redemption, the cup of affliction, the cup, uh, the, cup of a, the cup of Passover, the cup of affliction, the cup of redemption, and the cup of Elijah. There's four cups at Passover. So here it is. Jesus is sitting down. The table is set with the cups. And it says that Jesus takes the bread and dips it. Now what's crazy about that is sop in the Greek is 5596. It means piece of bread. It's from the Hebrew 5596, which in the Hebrew, it's the Hebrew, it's the Hebrew Strong's number 6040. It means nigh. So by him taking it, if he just gave it to him, it wouldn't have been a big deal because it was bread. But by him taking it and dipping it, which brings us to the, the Greek 60-40, nigh, it means he dipped it in the cup of affliction, the cup of suffering, the cup of misery. Got me? Jesus' own friend was his betrayer. And because of this, he was given a sop dipped in the cup of affliction. 
at the Seder meal. This cup represents the plagues of Egypt and Revelation. Wow. That's the cup. That's the cup the Jews, they take their little finger and dip it in and say, frogs, lice, they re renounce the plagues. Or they take it and dump it out because they don't receive of that. But Christ took that and dipped it. And once he had dipped it in that sop and Judas took it in, that's how come Satan could enter in now. Bam. And if you watch the movie The Passion, so if he dipped it in the cup of affliction, he was going to be afflicted. And Judas was going to suffer in misery for what he'd done. In the passion of the Christ, you remember that when Judas betrayed Jesus, he was running around the streets and there was little monster-looking little eh, demons around him and because he was in misery. And because of what he'd done, he was so tormented by it, he ran to that tree and hung himself because he couldn't handle it no more. He partook in the cup of affliction. Um, this whole message didn't have anything to do, uh, I don't want you to think that, you know, it was derived at, you know, the other church or anything like that, just so that you, you know, the guys know. Um, had nothing to do with that. It's the way that God was showing us and showing and telling that, listen, there's coming a time that members of your own house will be seated down and will betray you. And you need to have the table time. Amen. You need to be able to trust in Jesus Christ and not, you know, I knew it, that no good dirty double crossing, you know, you know, and then turn him in. Because if you will, if you if you're looking to save your life, you're gonna lose it. And the other thing is, even Jesus washed his betrayer's feet. What does that mean? Forgive him. No matter what. Don't hold anything in. Because really, it's not the person. You don't battle against flesh and blood. It's something that's behind it that's causing it to attack you. And it's not the person. Father, in Jesus' name, you are amazing. Yes. Your word is amazing. Father, you... Uh, if there's, any inf if there's any unforgiveness in us, whether it's brothers and sisters or friends or loved ones, Lord, those that cause the inner hurt, Father, your word says that a smoking flax you won't quench, you'd blow on it, and a bruised reed you won't discard. Father, it's the inner hurts. Father, I pray, Lord, that if there's any unforgiveness or any inner hurts, Lord, we just we lift them up to you, Father. And ask that you would cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us by your word. And Father, I pray that um, we would make a choice like the message this morning. You know, it was all about a tree, and, but it always comes down to a choice. Lord, to, that we would choose to sit at your table and fellowship with you. And read the word so that, Lord, we can give life to others, Father. And Lord, you know that I don't have anything in my heart against anyone, Father. And Lord, it's, it, it's all good. Everything is good in You. And who could I be to even hold anything against anyone? Father, when You have forgiven me of so much, of so much, even Peter, with the betrayal, the denial of You, You already knew Father, that when he was restored, that he would strengthen the brethren. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that, um, that we would have more table time and that we would feast on you and not live a, a, a life of famine so that, Lord, we can share with others your goodness and your love, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I love you guys. Love you. Feast of famine. Amen.